In 2019, I made the decision to fly down to Kansas and attend LDRS 38. I had really missed all the Rockets Magazine videos and was super bummed that nobody had been making videos like that anymore. I realized that I have so much camera equipment that I should just do it. Little did I know it was going to birth the legacy of not only this channel, but the build you're about to see. While I was at LDRS, I met my friends Taylor and Matt for the first time. Taylor is a true rocketry OG, having flown his first high power motor when he was 10 years old all the way back in 2004. I like to call him the Rocket Forrest Gump because he used to travel North America with his grandpa attending rocket launches all over the place. You can say anything about any launch from the early 2000s like, remember when the Contrail O-Motor Kato did LDRS 25? Or that year they did LDRS in Canada to which, every time he'll respond, yes, I was there. Matt's pretty new to rocketry, but he seems to be loving it. Last year at Airfest, he did his level 2 on a J500 and then flew his Lock Mystic Buzz on a K185 that we took basically an entire 18mm Blue Thunder motor to light. <laughs> now, Taylor and I grew up worshipping big project connoisseurs like the Gates Brothers and Wedge Oldham, and we started joking about a year ago about making our own project to that scale. We're really big fans of the Wildman Punisher and realized that an upscaled 12-inch Wildman Punisher is about the same size as the legendary Gates Brothers rocket Porthos. My friend Bryce now owns all of the Gates Brothers rockets, and after having seen Porthos fly in person for the first time at LDRS last year at the Bonneville Salt Flat, Taylor and I decided that it was time to pull the trigger. Myself, Taylor, and Matt are a rare breed of roller coaster rocket car nerds. We call ourselves the Anti Gravity Group because of a legendary company that builds wooden roller coasters called the Gravity Group. And we'd like to introduce you to the build of our 12 inch Wildman Punisher upscale known as the Sash Ringing, the Trash Singing, Mash Flinging, the Flash Springing, Ringing, the, the Crash. Ding, yes, the hash slinging slasher. <laughs> a few months ago, Matt and Taylor started cutting parts out of wood, so this could effectively be just a 12 inch Punisher kit by the time I was able to travel 1400 miles to Kansas City to build this rocket. And that's where you join us. But before you join us, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to Tim and Jackie and everybody over at Wildman Rocketry for helping make this crazy pipe dream come true. You guys should definitely go support them because Tim not only supports this channel, but he's been supporting me since I was about 14 years old. And that's saying a lot because I used to bug him all the time. Here we go. <laughs> Dude, I don't... Somehow, like... In the pictures, even, I knew this was large. <laughs> Good God, I'm dude. Just at it. Oh my. Hold on, I need to see the nose cone. Dude, what? what are we thinking? Wow, that's so light. You're on the shoulder in it, though. Yeah, so there's the three foot tube that I cut down. What'd you cut it with? A skill saw. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, kept turning the tube. Damn, the Mylar work good though. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty like it's pretty nice. Shout out to Dave and Jay at PML. Definitely worth it to get the pre glass tubes. Yeah, it's like over twice the price, but can you imagine trying to glass these? No. <laughs> After just trying to glass the couplers. Oh yeah, and, oh true. How'd that come out? They turned out pretty awesome. Dude, the balloon trick rules. First on the dock, it was to shoot some incredibly satisfying footage of Taylor trimming the excess foam core pieces out of our fins with the Nichrome hot wire tool he made. Now this rocket isn't very long for being 12 inches in diameter, and we're putting seven motors in it, so we were trying to find the perfect trifecta of light, cheap, and strong fins, so we went with 3 8 aircraft plywood with the centers cut out and replaced with foam. Straight on the floor like a mess. <laughs> You don't need to put that in the video. <laughs> You just got this huge garage, just a huge roll of carbon fiber for no reason. Literally, they know there's an entire rally car just off camera. Yeah. This guy's loaded, dude. If only they do. <laughs> Brought to you by Citibank. Yeah. I'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, Visa, MasterCard, Bar Discover, <laughs> American Express. Then we did a layer of carbon and left it open-ended so we could add more reinforcement as needed and still not add a ton of weight. In the end, you'll see they actually came out pretty light and pretty robust.
All right, Matt, I got you a present. Oh, no. This we busted it. into it, but I heard you like black licorice. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like my licorice. <laughs> Dark. <laughs> <laughs> do you like black licorice? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Oh, do you I, actually? Uh, I, it or takes you me know, a minute. How are you just being, you're just being nice? It takes me no. a minute. I think you don't like it, no. and that's fine. No, I, so if I understand correctly, black licorice is made from sorghum? Or something like that. There's, ah. some, there's some. There's it's some. Made from Jaeger beans. Is that is that right? No, that's, that's probably right. correct. But uh, my so my dad like as soon as I thought of black liquors. Oh shit! Release your refrigerator for me. That's yeah. nice of you. Yeah, after I sat in my car for four hours. Oh. <laughs> Two in there. Uh, let me make sure. Make sure. Let me make sure my uh, my stash is looking real premium. <laughs> yeah, real great. Oh, they, I, I know, I know. Ah, here we are. Oh, they're in foil. They're, they are in foil. They're nice and looks like Play-Doh in there. Nice and nice and cold. Are you feeling right now? Yeah. All right. I forgot that they had a bronze and Astoria, so I stopped there because I was, I was looking for Astoria. <laughs> yeah, it is Astoria. Yeah, it's Astoria. Here we are. I think that's a place in Oregon, actually. Oh, that, yeah, maybe that could be. It didn't. Doesn't look like it aged all that well. Pickle, pickle first. Oh. Yeah. It's, is it fine? It, it's I'm not, all right. That's something that I would eat too, probably. No. There's still. All right, is it gross? No, it's not bad. I for, I really Did you just eat cold food for some reason? So I mean, mm. it's, it's fine. But I just yeah. feel like I'm not a big fan of cold cheeseburgers. No, I mean, I'm definitely not either. But but it's still brown, so it's worth you can it. Put it in a microwave. Oh. Do you need an air fryer? That's the play for everything. Uh, I have a toaster. There you go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, air fryer. Yeah, I guess for context, anybody doesn't know they don't have Brahms in Kansas City, and it's like Matt's favorite thing. So yeah, it is. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Dude, my Brahms shake hit different though. Oh, oh, did it? In Wichita. Yeah. I got chocolate chip cookie dough. Whoa. It was great. Oh, it was good. Okay, that's good. Oh yeah, this is a Rocky Tree channel, I remember. Now back to the Punisher, I guess. We peeled the peel ply and then trimmed all the edges up and made it Matt's job as the level two certified one of the group to finish sand and make everything nice and square on the fins. And that lasted all of about 15 seconds before we realized we have a 28 foot parachute and it wasn't too windy to the point that we would get dragged across the field in Taylor's backyard. So it was now or never to play with it like we were a bunch of 10 year olds. This side still rolled up. I think it might open a little bit easier than we're thinking. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, it looks like one of those like sport tanks. Yeah. Why do I have them like as much fun as that was it did serve a purpose we needed to i don't know figure out how to pack it or something we definitely weren't just screwing around but after that it was down to some serious business the couplers were a bit of a difficult fit so we had to spend a decent amount of time sanding with some power tools to get them to fit to the point that we were comfortable with it but eventually we got a good fit while Matt was busy with the sanding, Taylor and I began assembling the motor mount assembly, which consists of a central 98mm motor tube and six 75mm motor tubes. This assembly uses three centering rings with all seven holes and then a fourth one with a 98 just in the center up at the top and a fourth one with just the 98 hole up at the top. This restricts us to about a 5 grain or Aerotech 6400 case for all the outboards, although with the 98 up the middle going pretty much to the moon, if we got a pretty spicy O motor into there, we could still do a pretty full P load, so obviously we're going to make this motor mount pretty dang robust. That is absurd. Yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, that's a 
What are people doing putting 54s in 12 inch rockets? Yeah. Where you can fit. There's room for 75, so put 75s. Everybody wants retainers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a place to help all the repos, I've heard. In classic big rocket fashion, the whole motor mount assembly will also have all thread running end to end with hardware on either side of each of the centering rings to make it as robust as possible. What you're seeing right there though is aluminum conduit tubes that also run end to end on the motor mount assembly. This is because the lower coupler can also serve as an electronics bay and in the future we'll be able to do air starts by running e-matches through these conduit tubes. With the dry fit practice run out of the way, we took all the tubes back out and glued the 98mm tube in the middle. We did the 98mm tube first so we could properly fill it each side of every ring on the 98mm tube and then glue in the 3 inch stuff and do the same thing. No expense was spared in epoxy in this build as this fin can wound up having about half a gallon of epoxy in it and you're about to start seeing why. Isn't it the... Is that the conduit? It is! <laughs> Matt, are you listening? As hard as I can. <laughs> this might be a disaster. Yeah, it could be. Drill me. Alright, score one for Matt because it was his idea to use the drill to fast feed all the nuts and hardware through the motor mount assembly, so congrats Matt. You've done it. You might be thinking those excess pieces look a little long and you can't be faulted for thinking so. However, that hardware actually goes all the way up into the coupler and then is secured with fasteners on top of that as well. So effectively, this all thread is acting as a load distributor throughout the entire fin can assembly. Here you can see Taylor marking the centering rings because each side is going to have countersunk wood screws into the rings holding this all together as well. No! <laughs> It's concentrating. You're like orange juice. <laughs> Next, Taylor slits the fins to the corresponding centering rings. If you're wondering why we waited till this point to do this, it's because the piece of wood that's connected to the foam would have been floating in nothing if it didn't have carbon holding it all together. <laughs> I think we're hitting epoxy. Yeah, that's what I was saying too. That's gonna teach you guys how to make a 12 inch electronic thing. Yeah, so what you gotta do here is you gotta put this here U bolt into the holes. Step one, have somebody put all the holes in. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just paint by numbers. <laughs> it's the match show. Hi guys, welcome to the Matt Show. I bought you a mat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, howdy folks. How y'all doing? My name badge says Matt, but you can call me Macho Matt. Can I get, can I get a big howdy Macho Matt? Howdy Macho Matt. Wow, thanks guys. Here we are, we're building us an eBay. And uh, yeah, I just gotta put these in here like this, right? I feel like you should specify because people are like, why did you put that oh, epoxy there? You're just going to grind it out. Oh. Um, we got a little overzealous because it's hot and humid and the epoxy started curing. Yeah, things got hectic. It really, they're supposed to take like three hours still to cure and it just flashed like West Systems does sometimes if it's hot and humid. Yeah, it's like. So we just started freaking out and started putting fillets on and then, you know, hindsight is 2020 as they say. <laughs> After a bunch of Dremel and sanding and a little bit of mallet convincing, we eventually got everything to fit so we could put it together and take a look at it for the first time. Now, because I called that a long time ago. What? That the fins look small. No. <laughs> oh my Dude, God. Matt's mad. 
Well, I guess then we could, uh, you know, make it bigger. Make, make it stronger, right? Well, I mean, the span is 12 inches, so it's enough. It's got, it's, this isn't right, right? Or is it? The bin should be. <laughs> uh, it's hard to tell. Because they're the right shape at the very least. Yeah, that's so the right shape, right? They almost look like they're the right with the tab all the way out almost looks right. With what? With the tab all the way out, like before you put it in? No, just use this one. Yeah, like hold it against your back. Up. That's too big, I think. I know I guess it looks pretty. Dick. They do look, sorry. No, it's okay. I'm just, I went and played this game. We measured it from the three inch, right? It's the same as the diameter, right? Well, I don't know. You told me that. Where's your three inch? No, what, what, what? Oh, is this, is this one not accurate? It's, I think it just looks weird because it's so big. Three, three inches? That's like three and a half. Three and a quarter. This one, what's the actual two? <laughs> it's three and eight. Uh, so within an eighth of an inch, when you scale that up by four, the, the, see, look, the bin is three and eight. eight. All right. And, and what? And what? And to the bed looks the other quarter. No, it's not. Where? Uh, I guess you're right. Why does it look funny? Does it look, does it look weird to you? Well, I mean, imagine we just saw this. Yeah. Doesn't that look kind of small? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, you're going to size it up? Dude, it's spot on. Is it? Check it out. Yeah, we'll yeah, see. This is, this, I'm glad the camera's rolling. Yeah, that's pretty muddy, honestly. It's right on. Take, cool. take a peek. There. You guys, you guys were, were telling me I didn't scale it right. Oh, no, nobody said that. It was implied. All right, so Taylor, on this all rod here, I mean, all through it, uh, I, I just was going off of what you had in the center there. And then, uh, so I, you know, if you look at it here, put them up together, and it's, we're not going to have enough all thread. Yeah, we are. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Thanks. All right, I guess we did. <laughs> is a three inch Punisher. Yeah. For a channel called Rocket Vlogs, I don't go into vlog mode a lot. This is insane, dude. Dude, the fins make it look so big. It does not <laughs> fit on the camera frame. Dude, it's crazy standing next to it. Like, <laughs> you're like, oh, that's this a is, big rocket. This is a rocket. <laughs> this is a rocket we're going to fly. And after we finished all that very serious business, we got back to work and started gluing the fins in. Now, I should mention that all of the gluing done on this fin can was done with Thick and West Systems Epoxy. Most of it had the fast hardener, but we did use slow hardener in certain scenarios. With all the fins glued in place, it was time to pull the whole motor mount assembly back out and start attacking it with even more epoxy fillets. We did a bunch of fillets along the length of the fins on both the 98mm and 75mm tubes. We want this thing to have so many points of contact and so much reinforcement that we never have to worry about it. The cottage cheese chunks in there. What if you just like pour some of it in and then brush it around? Oh, yeah, it's, just, it's getting wet and wild. That is, this is why we keep you around for this idea you just had. This is, I, is this too small? Are you too big? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. yeah I guess I shouldn't praise wait. you for this idea yet. <laughs> yeah. No, I we should use uh, post wrap. He's gotten delusional. Yeah, I have. I was thinking roller coasters. You yeah, said rockets and, and rally. So you know, like, yeah, get some roller coasters. Yeah. Watch the camera. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's 